Okay, so this is last time where we stopped. I started 10 minutes late. Uh, this is the last time where we start, uh, stopped. Um, we talked about uh, using <coughs> multi dimensional arrays with the dynamic allocation. Uh, here, the, what we said is actually, uh, as you see in this code, can I show you my. their stuff. Uh, in this code, I, uh, I have a pointer of a pointer. Let me load those files. Let me load all of them. Okay, let's look at the code itself. I don't know which one was the code. Was it the code? No, not that one. Yeah, yeah. So this one says that I have a new type type definition, just an alias, okay? So integer type pointer. So I am not going to use this actually. What I'm going to do is just, I will do say this, okay? I have a uh, pointer of an integer pointer, okay? And I am making an array of integer pointers, okay? So I guess that's it, this would compile. And this would run. Let me see if it is going to compile. I don't want to leave anything out. But did I get an error message? I don't know. Where is where are my windows? Let me find my window, compile. Does anybody see my windows? Tools, tools, maybe tools. I think in the view, right? Yeah. Report window. Yeah, I think that's it. So let me do this and okay, so it compiles, no problem. So what did I do? I said that get rid of this one. I don't like this kind of okay. This is the this is the real stuff. I have a pointer of a pointer, integer pointer. Okay. I made an array. Okay, so in this place I just type the type, right? Whatever my type is. It could be it could be my money or it could be integer it could be double or as you see integer pointer is another type right so i am saying that i need i need d1 integer pointers as an array okay i need d1 number of integer pointers as an array give me that one so since it's a it's an array i have to show i have to i have to hold a pointer to it what kind of pointer i am going to point to is going to be a pointer to an integer pointer. So again, this is a type. This is just a type, nothing but a type. Okay, that, that's what you say, right? You put a type here, double integer money, uh, my grade, whatever, doesn't matter. Here I am putting an integer pointer, okay? So uh, I have a pointer to an integer pointer uh, because I have an integer pointer array. I am going to show it that way. So I have a integer pointer array okay each element is an integer pointer so i am going to do this i am going to do i am going to allocate a new integer array and i am going to hold a pointer to that array and each pointer will be assigned to my new array so that was the picture let me show you the picture that we have drawn last time this is what we did actually 
So first I have a I have a D1 size array here. Each one is an integer pointer and I located three integer arrays and each one points to one of them. Okay. Okay, so this is this is how we did stuff. And let me see let let me try to compare this with this one. Integer okay integer array d1 d2 how does this look okay maybe i should make this a uh, green okay integer array d1 d2 how does this look uh, on the memory on the memory it's going to look like this okay there will be an uh, array of integers and its size will be d1 times d2 okay and this a r a r r holds a pointer to the beginning of it as opposed to this one this one has one two three four arrays and the first array is an integer pointer array. Okay, let's say, I think I made this three by three, right? Is that what I, I don't remember, but yeah, these are the three and each one is, oh, no, 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 yeah. Um, the, the D1 is three, for the D2, I, I do it dynamically, okay? I said that your size is three and then six and then nine, right? That's what I, is that what I did? Okay, it was first d2 times 2. Okay, so it is 3 times, no, what is d2? d2, let's say, uh, let's say d2 is, let's say d2 is uh, uh, 2, 4, 4, then it is always, well, oh, oh, okay, so this is something different. Yeah, let me do this then. Let me do it in a different case then. Let let me make this D2 plus each one is going to have a different uh, dimension. D2 plus D1 times 2 maybe. Yeah. Okay, so depending on the depending on the D1 and D2 values so each array will have a different dimension and I will end up having such an array representation but it will be represented like I mean logically it looks like this or logically it looks like this but in the memory it behaves like this this is what is happening okay this is what the, this is what is uh, happening let me go back and let me try to use real numbers actually and let me try to see what kind of differences I have. Okay, this is my first array M, and this is my second array. Okay, let's make it K, okay? Integer array K, and it is three by three. Okay, three by three here, just for the just for the sake of example, I am going to make this D2 is the same as D1 and they are both are going to be three. Okay, so I made this change and I am going to make this D2. So it is a three by both of them are three by three. Okay. So this K and this M are both of them are three by three. And I'm going to show you, try to show you what's going on in the memory, okay? So this is three by three. So that means that there are nine elements in here, right? There are nine elements. Let me try to make it like that. Okay, so this is element number zero, this is element number eight. And I have here three pointers 
three integer pointers and three integers, three integers, and three integers. Okay, so this is M. This is our M, and this is our K. Okay, let's make this K. So which one do you think is, which one do you think is more, which one do you think is cheaper to use in terms of CPU time, in terms of accessing, in terms of creation, in terms of uh, real life usage? Which one is cheaper to use? Is it K? Which one? K. K is cheaper, why? Because whenever you try to access an array, okay, the calculation that you are gonna do is, Let's let's try to see what what what's going to happen here. Calculation when I if I try to calculate this value, k two one. So what does that say? Okay, k is a k is an array. Okay, get the second element of k. How do I get the second element of k? It would be k plus two times what? Two times, what am I going to write here? Two times, size of no, not size of n, size of, well, I mean, this is two, two is here, right? Two is this, two is this, right? Two times, I mean, what, what is, what is the type of each element of K? Each element K is like a three dimensional array, right? Okay, so what you are saying in, in uh, maybe uh, maybe you are right when you say type of uh, size of int, but it will be okay. It will be three times size of int. So what is this? So this is actually this one is actually here. This one is actually d two. Okay. This is D2, and then plus, plus what? Plus 1. So that's the calculation to get to the, to get to this index, okay? So 2 times, this is D2, okay? I, my, my dimension, I need, I need that dimension. D2, and, um, and plus 1, it comes from there. So plus 1 from here. So it, it looks like I am going to do I am going to do plus multiplication. Actually, this is again one again the one 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 addition. That's what I am going to do. Uh, one two three four operations. That's it. How about this one? When I say m m. Two, one. Okay. When you say M two, when you say M two, I need to calculate something here, right? So it's going to be to calculate the M two. I need to say M plus two times what? M plus two times. Okay, let's write it. M times M plus two times what? Size of integer pointer. Exactly, size of size of integer pointer because this is an integer pointer at a, right? M times two t m plus two times size of integer pointer. After doing this, after doing this, okay, I need to go to that memory location. I need to pick that number up. Okay, whatever that number is, okay, I will go to that address and I will I will do. I will do, I will, I will, I will call that address temporary, okay? Then on that temporary, I will do temp plus one times size of, this time what? Size of integer, right? Okay. It looks like the number of operations are kind of the same. Plus, plus, multiplication, multiplication, plus, plus, and multiplication, multiplication, but this one will need two memory lookup. One is inside the D1, okay, here, this, this, this array. The second one is here. Although this one will, 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 will only 
uh, will only make one memory lookup. So this one is cheaper in terms of memory lookup, okay? For this one, you need to refer to the memory two times. For this one, you need to refer to the memory just once. This is an important difference, why? Because if you are using cache, okay? Everybody uses cache. You, you, you like it or you don't like it. Hardware uses cache. So you need to go to the memory two times, and if your whole array is not in the cache, then you need to, you need to get to cache miss penalty, and that's going to make your program s slower. And this one will store nine integers in the memory. This one will store nine integers in the memory plus three integer pointers in the memory, and that's going to be uh, more expensive. Okay, that's going to be more expensive in terms of memory. So why do we? Can we start the process? Let's start the start from the start from the end. Pass it backwards. Okay, start from the end. Thank you. So why do we, why do we, okay, we said that this is expensive, this uses more memory. Why do we prefer such a thing? Well, as the name implies, it's a dynamic array, right? I can have these kind of array configurations or this kind of array configuration, right? So that sometimes we need to do this kind of, a, this kind of an, uh, uh, processing, array processing to save some memory and et cetera. And if I don't know the values of D1 and D2 at the beginning of my program, then that's going to be another issue. That's going to be another issue. So uh, I may prefer such a I may prefer such a uh, uh, such a such a configuration for some cases. Okay, it's, it's up to you. Of course, this is more complicated to handle. You need to make your integer. You need to make your array like this first. Okay, you need to allocate all of your arrays, one-dimensional arrays. Then at the end, when you are done, you need to delete all of them one by one. Here, as you see, you need to delete them one by one. Okay, so any questions on this? Yes? Can you declare flag inside of size of parentheses? Can we, just tell me what you are saying on this line. Can you? Can I do what? Here. I don't I don't understand what you are saying. Can you open the PDF before? PDF, okay. okay. And next you mean you mean where? Oh you mean here. No, next page I mean size of yeah. Okay. Can we do what? Declare size. Well, I don't understand why would you do such a thing. Declaration type? Yes, declaration. Declaration type of what? Size of integer point, integer pointer. Yeah. Declare type M. Well, here, the, the declaration type of M is integer pointer pointer. Hmm. It is not, okay? It is not integer pointer, but if you like to do such a thing, I wouldn't suggest. Maybe you could do this. Don't do that. That would be kind of confusing. Size of declaration type of the reference M. Okay. Maybe you could do that, but and here you would say declaration type of the reference, the reference M. Maybe you could do that, but yeah, well, it works, but this is not conventional. Okay, this is not conventional. Maybe it's a good idea, I don't know. Okay, maybe it's a good idea, I don't know. So yeah, this, this would work, but I mean, if you don't know what kind of integer pointer or the pointers you have and you, you are not sure, maybe you could do that, but again, not that conventional. Yes. If you need a uh, would you use uh, dynamic arrays or vectors? If I if I what? I mean need need arrays. Uh, somewhere you need somewhere in the program you need to use uh, dynamic dynamic arrays. Would you use vectors or uh, dynamic arrays? 
But if, if you need to be very, very careful about memory usage and the CPU optimization, etc., okay, dynamic arrays are way to go, yeah. Vectors are nice. They are implemented at, as, as efficient as they uh, can be, but still they are part of the whole C++ thing. And, uh, and there are some issues. I mean, whenever you make an array or whenever you make a vector, okay, each element of that vector has to be constructed, okay? So the constructor means constructor has to be called, and that makes it kind of slow at the beginning already. But when you make an array, okay, when you make a, such an array, when you say, instead of, instead of, okay, uh, let's keep this as an integer. If you use, if you use, memory allocation use malloc, okay? Malloc will not call anybody's constructor. So you may have two-dimensional money arrays that are uninitialized, okay? Well, what did we say at the beginning? We don't like our objects to be uninitialized, but if initialization time is, 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 is it too expensive for you, maybe you can keep your money objects as, uh, as uninitialized, and then, then, then use malloc to create your arrays and take the risk yourself. That will make you a little bit uh, faster, okay? But these kind of cases are very rare. So, I mean, if you, if you, if you need to use arrays, the, uh, 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 either single dimensional, multi-dimensional, doesn't matter. Start with a vector. If it becomes a problem, if the speed becomes a problem, then try to find these kind of solutions later. But never start from the dynamic arrays uh, side or uh, never start from the C type of arrays from the start. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't understand how the vectors are working, work, how the vectors work. That doesn't mean that these kind of things are not important. These kind of things are important because uh, the time will come and you are going to use it, okay? Pointers are part of the C and C++ language, and we are going to see. Well, they, they came up with this idea of iterators later we are going to uh, see, and iterators are kind of abstractions of the pointers, so you need to understand what the pointers are. What's going on with my, oh, maybe I should switch to this one. Now it's going to ask me my credentials. Okay, that should fix it. Okay, back to classes. Any other questions? So I'll try these again, then as I said before, uh, I don't know if it makes sense or not. I mean, you may, you may think that you understood all things or you already knew about these. When you try to make, when you try to make um, uh, experiments with them, you will always find some points that you did not understand uh, completely or there is another way of looking at things, okay? So you may say that I never thought of this thing like this before. So this is a new way to look at this array and etc. So my suggestion is always, I'll always do these kind of, okay? Write this program yourself without looking at this, okay? Write this yourself. Try to understand what is going on. Try to make changes. Uh, try to play with that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, and this is kind of a, a, a issue. Writing this line 12 is kind of confusing if you are trying to write it uh, the first time. 
after you after after a while uh, you get used to it and you, you will you will you will see that it is not that difficult but without doing these kind of experiments that will be difficult for you to learn the, the whole thing so back to classes uh, as we said before pointers are for any types including our fundamental types or our uh, own types so if you have a class named my class i can keep a pointer to it okay so remember p is a local variable this new my class object is on the heap p is an automatic okay i i i i declared this p here and it will be killed by the compiler's code automatically when the scope ends but this object created by new will never be deleted unless uh, i delete them or my program is ended okay so here uh, uh, as with any as with any pointers i can use this arrow operator remember the arrow operator with the struct pointers it is available here so if this is my case if this is my my class includes a data member named grade okay if it is public then i can access this grade using this notation or the the long notation is this one parentheses well i have to use the parentheses because the the presence of the dot operator is higher than the presence of the referencing operator so it is kind of difficult to write parentheses the reference p close parentheses and dot so this is easier this one error operator is easier so people prefer uh, this one they prefer this one okay so let me we already talked about the this pointer uh, the book talks about the assignment operator this pointer overloading the assignment operator and etc and there is a concept of shallow and deep copies we will talk about them too but instead of talking about them i will try to go to the 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 example in the book it's called pfrad and i'm going to show you that one instead of all of them how do i make this talk can I make this duck go to view? Floating? Ah, okay, so it is not floating anymore. It is duck. Okay, so I have a class named PFRAD. PFRAD is partially field array. Okay, so it's kind of a, it's a kind of a, what would I say, a, a primitive version of vector. Okay, STL vector. I can add numbers to it i can add doubles to it okay so it is kind of dynamic but at the beginning i specify a size i say that okay your size is this much so the constructor takes either no parameters with the no parameter constructor you say that i have a size of 50 i mean maybe i shouldn't say size sorry i have a capacity of 50 i can hold 50 doubles but my size at the beginning is zero. I don't hold anything, right? So, or I can change this value. There is this copy constructor, and we will talk about it later. I have this element, add element. I just add a new element to it. And I have this simple predicate function, okay, full. It just say that if my used, my size is same as capacity, then I am full. I cannot get any new doubles in it. This one will return thank you did, did everybody sign this did everybody okay um, so full is this one get capacity is uh, returning capacity get number used so capacity is number used are very different right capacity is my uh, uh, how many doubles i can hold okay so how many doubles i am holding it is this one empty array is just use is zero so it is just making the use zero so array is empty now as you see it's not a constant uh, function okay this is our operator index and i think we should have one more here i keep changing books code but it should be 
Where would I put const? Const should be here, here, or there. Where is the const? Before square, after square bracket. After the square bracket? So where is the function key? Okay. Well, after the square bracket would be with the like something like where without the uh, yeah it will be something like here right. So it is definitely so I I, I confuse you right so it is kind of confusing. So this one is const function definition and see and see okay. So. Uh, and the assignment operator, we are going to talk about it. And we have a new function named destructor. Destructor, I think I talked about this last time. It's kind of the opposite of constructor. Destructor is called whenever your object is dying, okay? Whenever your object dies, destructor is called by the code, by the compiler's code, uh, automatically. It will be called automatically when the object dies. For the automatic variables, okay? For the automatic variables, constructor is called when the object is first uh, declared. Destructor is called when the object dies at the end of the scope, at the end of the uh, block of the local scope. Okay, and if your objects are dynamic, destructors, uh, constructors are called with the new operator, and destructors are called when you delete the object. Okay, but the rule is this: every time, every for every object. Constructors are called when the objects start living, okay, when they are first created, constructors are called, one of the constructors. And destructor, there is only one destructor, it will be called when the object dies. And its name is this, destructor, okay. It destructs the object, or, or it de deconstructs the object, okay, but we call them destructors. Okay, its name is this, same as the class name, only a tilde character at the beginning, tilde character at the beginning, and uh, it is it is called destructor. So we are going to use destructor. Actually, they will be important. Why did we delay the discussion of destructors up to now? Because we didn't have to do anything when we when our objects are killed, because we didn't have much. Because when for the constructor, we had the initialization problem, we had the data verification problem, and etc. For the destructors to handle, we didn't, have, we didn't have anything much. But now, since we are declaring our object with the new operator, for every new operator, there should be a delete, right? So where is the delete for my object, OK? So whenever my objects are killed, I need to delete all of my dynamically allocated stuff. So destructors are the good places. So we are going to talk about that, too. So this is basically the whole class. Let's see one example okay the main says that okay main say that i have a test pf lad function i am calling it again again and again okay to test it uh, as long as you give me a y and uh, so i don't see any declarations of pf uh, test pf lad and let's go to this function okay this function says that okay what is my capacity i get the capacity and i get line Line 68, I have PFRAD, uh, uh, object temporary with the capacity. Okay, so I have an array now, my new type of an array, partially filled array. Okay, uh, and my size, uh, my, my capacity will be cap. And I will ask the user, give me some doubles. So, so you can give me as many doubles as you like. Okay, but it cannot be larger than cap okay you can give me at most cap number of doubles and this loop okay this loop is going to do that okay get next if next is greater than zero or temp is not full then i will add this element to my new array so it's like push back right push back function of the uh, vector class i keep adding one by one the only thing is that I need to make sure that every time I add a new element, my partial field array is not full. Okay, so it looks like this is dynamic, but it is not as dynamic as the vectors because with the vectors we don't have anything like full, right? 
we keep adding as much as we like. So we can change it later, maybe. We can change it to the vector behavior uh, whenever you, we understand this stuff. So I get this one. So I have, I have this line printed on the screen. It says, get number used. So how many numbers I entered? Because whenever I enter a negative number, this loop ends, uh, and I, I, I will end up having that many uh, doubles in my array. So I get, I write this get number used. I print it on the screen. Then I have this nice loop. It says index zero to index less than count. Okay. Print them on the screen one by one, temp index. And that's it. Okay. So this index operator, how many functions did I use? This index operator I have used from the class. Get number used. Get number used I used, right? Add element I used, full I used. What else? Did I, yeah, did I, and, 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 and we have this constructor. Okay. So uh, if I run this program, can I run this program? Maybe I could run, run, compile, yeah. It's doing something. Yeah, so. My capacity is, let's say, 1,000. Enter up to 1,000 non-negative numbers. OK. Uh, and minus 20. So I have entered three numbers. These are the numbers. And plus a sentinel value. You want to test again? No. OK, so uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the program itself. So let's look at the. Let's look at the implementation of this simple class, PFRAD, uh, partial field array double. Okay, let's start from the constructor. Okay, I have, I have one, two, three constructors. The first one, no parameter constructor. Okay, no parameter constructor say that Oh, by the way, nobody asked me about this private data members. I have three private data members. One is use how many how many elements are are being used in my array. Of course, it's initially it's going to be zero. Zero elements are used. Capacity will be taken from the customer. If the customer doesn't provide a capacity, my default capacity will be 50. Uh, I already know that because this one says so, okay. If you don't provide the capacity, it's going to be 50. Okay, and what else? Uh, and I have, I have this double pointer. So I am going to keep my numbers. I am going to keep my numbers as a, as a, as a, as a C array, right? As an array. Uh, that's why I have a double pointer. But with the double pointer, I need to know how many elements I have used, and etc. I am going to use this. I am going to use this um, uh, capacity and use uh, uh, as the as the values to remember how many elements I have in them and what's my total capacity. Okay, so let's look at the no parameter constructor. It says that my capacity is going to be 50, and use is of course zero, and and what? And A gets the value of new double capacity, that's it. Okay, so that's, that's, that's it. I actually, this is a, okay, no parameter, as a no parameter, as a no parameter constructor, this is simple enough. You don't need to talk much about it. But, I mean, it would be better to write this using a, a uh, uh, delegate constructor call. Remember the delegate constructor call? I would write PFRAD here, like this, right? Maybe I should just, instead of doing this, this would have been simpler and okay, so that would be a better one, right? So I am, I have already defined this, right? 
why don't I use this one? So let me turn this off and let's use this one. Okay, so the, the this one say that I am going to take I am going to take the size from you. Okay, I'm going to take the size from you and I'm going to set the size to size. Use the zero and um, I am going to make a new array. Okay. Uh, this new array has a size of capacity. Size is set to capacity here. Okay, need double ca capacity and this is my A. That's it. So this is my second constructor. What was my what was what was my third constructor? It's a copy constructor. Okay, this is fine. Copy constructor is a name specially given to these kind of constructors. Okay. This is the copy constructor. As the name implies, it just copies another PFRAD object into myself. Okay, so the parameter is another another PFRAD object. Of course, to make things a little bit faster, I take them by reference. Since I am not modif I am not going to modify the other object, I take it as a const. So constant reference other object. Okay, so as always, this name is a better name for the other objects. Okay. This is this is the this is the other object. Okay, let's so where do I use such a thing? I would use such a thing. Let me go to okay. So if I say PFRA D my T2, if I like to say T2 will be the same as temp. This is what would you do? So this is uh, this is calling the copy constructor. Okay. So what is the big deal about this copy constructor? So, uh, well, it's uh, actually it's a very important constructor. It is just not an ordinary constructors. Okay. Copy constructors are important, and there is always one. Even if you don't define a copy constructor, compiler is going to make a new constructor for you that will behave like a copy constructor, like this one. Okay. It will it will behave like a copy constructor and it will be available so even if I don't have this line even if I don't have this line this line will work okay even if you don't define a copy constructor line 70 will work it's like remember default constructors okay you have a class you have a class you did not okay you have a class you did not define a constructor for your class. Remember our first money class. I think it was the money class. We didn't have any constructors, but we were able to make new objects. So the compiler was writing a, uh, 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 used to write a, a constructor for us, and we, we have been using it. Okay, this is the same. Up to now, we have never written. We have never written a copy constructor before but there is always a copy constructor available it is always it is always possible to write line 70 for any class including your money class or the or the bank account class or whatever class you that, that you have written or the classes that you have written for your homework okay copy constructors are available uh, all the time why are they available they are available because they were available because go to the PDF. Um, let's talk about this one. Copy constructor needs to be called at three positions, three places. Okay. The first one is this. The first one is class object declared and initialized to, initialized to other object. It's like let's say I have a money object m1 it is ten dollars and twenty cents okay this is our regular constructor the two the constructor with two parameters but i have another money object i like to do this sometimes this is very convenient so this is copy constructor is called as expected so what is the big deal about this well there is nothing much uh, uh, that there is nothing much new about this one so but it's a constructor, it's kind of a regular constructor, but it is, so this number one, 
class objectiklere denilen işler yapabilir objectiler sakızı. The second one is important though. Okay. When when function returns a class type object. Okay. Let's say let me try to Okay. Let me try to take this out and put it here. So this is number 1. Okay. This is number 2. Let's say I have a function f. I don't know what it takes. Let's say it's an integer. Okay. And it runs and runs and runs. And along the way, I have a money object. And later, I just return it. So its return type should be money, right? Okay. M is a local object. After I return, after I return M, it has to be killed, right? So what am I returning then? I mean, if M is going to die, what am I returning? Okay. So somebody has to make a copy of my object M. Okay. Who is going to make that copy? My copy constructor. So compiler automatically calls this copy constructor to make a temporary or a temporary money object and that object is returned so if somebody calls if somebody calls let's say let's say uh, money money m r f 2 this F2 will return a money object. Okay, that that well, well the M is not returned because M is going to die. So the compiler returns me a temporary object. Okay, maybe this will make more sense. C out F2. F2 returns a temporary object. Okay, and it will be printed to the screen. That temporary object will be created by your copy constructor and that uh, copy constructor will take m as a parameter and it will make a new object that's that's called the that's called the temporary object and copy constructor will be automatically called there so if you don't have a copy constructor in your class if you don't have a copy constructor in your class you won't be able to you won't be able to return an object f uh, uh, of your of your classes okay but you said that I we have been returning money objects we have been returning other objects but as I said there is a default copy a copy constructor available all the time that's why you were able to but if somebody does this let's do that let's do that that we do crazy stuff all the time let's do some crazy stuff if I take this from here and put it in my private section so None of your customers won't be able to, okay, none of your customers will be able to return an object PFRAD from their functions, okay, because I made their copy constructor, I made this copy constructor private, okay. So I said that I am not going to use the default copy constructor, whatever it is, I am going to write it myself, but I am going to make it private. So what does that mean? It means it means this. I will get an error message for line 70. Also, I will get an error message whenever somebody tries to return. So whenever somebody tries to return uh, my object values. By the way, do I have? Oh, still say that my network quality is bad, but nobody is making any complaints. So okay. So uh, uh, that's what we did the second time, the copy construct. So second time is very important, the second version. And let's look at the third case where we need the copy constructor, which is the most important one, actually. Remember call by value, call by reference thing? What did we say? When we do the call by value, a copy of our objects will be made. Who is making that copy? Again, the copy constructor compiler automatically calls the copy constructor to make a copy of your object okay 
So the contractors are automatically called. Uh, the advantage of, one of the advantages of using call by value is that the, 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 the argument that you sent will be copied, right? So it won't be changed. Only the, whatever you make a change, those changes will be made on the copy of your uh, original data. But somebody has to make a copy of it. Who is going to make that copy? Copy constructor. And if you don't provide a copy constructor, default will be used. And if you have the don't, if you don't have the default one, or if you like like with that, if you hit your default one like this in your private section, so nobody will be able to make a call by value with this class anymore because I have hidden okay uh, my class my 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 copy constructor is hidden now okay uh, so nobody will be able to call the copy constructor outside of my class okay yes for global function the function that has uh, a class as a top parameter wouldn't work in this case for what functions? Uh, global function that has a, a class as a uh, parameter, yeah, call by value parameter. For globals or for any other function, okay? I mean, even if that function is part of your class, as a public function, nobody will be able to call that one because that call, that, that, that one will, will not compile. Let me try to compile this one, actually. Let me, so when I try to compile this one, let me try to compile it. I will get at least one error because I know that, of course, I did the same thing again. Floating project, no. Floating, floating report window. Here it is. And don't make it float. Ah, don't for okay. So interesting. It's just view floating report window. Make it larger. Okay. So that is my error message. So it so it says that this one is private error within context. Okay. Here it is. Okay. So you can't do that. But if I remove this line, let me remove this line, and uh, let me compile it. It compiles fine, because I didn't use any call by value. Okay, I didn't return my object yet here. But if I do this, call by value, okay. Just T2. I have a function PFRAD and it takes this call by value, but I need to send something here, right? Okay. So let me make a dummy dummy array dummy array and let me pass it here call by value and Okay, t tell me where the error is going to come. Error will be here, or error will be, error will be here. Line 66, or line 66, or line 58. Which one is there now? I think it's going to be 58 because 58 is trying to make a copy of this PFRADD. Okay, so let's try to compile it. So this one, 58, it says what? Two main arguments to function PFRAD. What? Test PFRAD. Too many arguments to. Where is my test? Oh, okay. So it is a different thing because I had a prototype, right? So PFRAD. Good. 
let's compile it again. So the first one is 47. So void PF LED, PF LED. So let me fix that problem. Is it correct now? Okay, so 39, but, okay, within this context and this one. Okay, it says that initializing argument of void error within this context and this one is a private. So I get a error message here, it's one say that you cannot make such a function, okay? Because this one will require me to call copy constructor, and the copy constructor is private, okay? So I got the error message at line 47. So that means that my original question is, what was the question? I said that, is it going to be, is it going to be Okay, 70, no, no, well, I said, okay, it's going to be here, or the place I called it, 57, no, even before that, okay, it was here. So the answer would be, I can, I guess, it would be here. No, no, it would be, it would be there. You cannot write such a function, because I don't know how to call it. I don't know how to pass the parameter to your function. I need to make a copy of this PFNAD, but there is no copy constructors available. It's private. Oh, okay, I am way over my time, but I started 10 minutes late, and I made the exact one hour lecture. So let's take 15 minutes of break. After the break, we will come back and we will write our PFRAD, including the copy constructor. <laughs>
Okay, so let's look at this uh, implementation uh, of the copy constructor. Here is my copy constructor. Okay, a little bit more detailed, but it is not complicated or difficult. But before that, maybe I should maybe I should look at this uh, third one. Okay. When argument of a class is plugged in a direct argument to a call by value parameter, that is, that is, uh, that is, this one. The third one is this. Let's say a function. It needs a money object m, okay. And it does something, something, something. I don't know what it is. Let's say this is void. When I am calling this function money m1, when I say f m1, before this function m1, before this function f is called, okay, copy constructor is called definitely. So before f works, okay, copy constructor of money uh, class will be called, will be called. So far, this was what was happening. We didn't know, okay because this, the default copy constructor was run. And uh, uh, re remember what I said about the uh, assignment operator? Assignment operator is available for us. There is a default assignment operator. And if we don't overload it, default will be taken as a default. We did not, we did not use to, we did not, we did not need to overload the assignment operator because the behavior of the default assignment operator is fine. And most of the time, behavior of the copy constructor is fine. So the behavior of the default assignment operator is member-wise copyright. It just calls the assignment operator between the elements of those two objects. And copy constructor does exactly the same. It just copies the contents of whatever I have uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the other object. So most of the time, this behavior is OK with us. But now we are dealing with the pointers, the problem is a little bit different. So let's look at the picture actually. So do you remember our PFRAD, right? So I am saying going to say PF array PF array D D one ten. Let's try to see what's going on within the I don't think that I will be able to fit this in this slide so let me make a new slide here page manipulation <coughs> insert okay and I need this one Where did it go? Didn't I copy it? Oh, okay. So I was pasting them here. Okay, so let's look at the memory. Memory is here, okay. I have my object D1. Inside my object, okay, I have three places. Let's look at the, let's look at the code. Code says that in my class, I have three data members, double pointer, capacity, and used, okay. And my constructor that takes an integer parameter will do this it will assign size to capacity assign zero to use and a will get a new pointer that points to this such a such a such an array so let's do that so a capacity and used again used will be zero capacity will be 10 and a will be somewhere in the uh, uh, memory, okay, 10, 
Okay. So that's that will be the case, right? That will be the case. So question. Tell me what the operator size of would return on object D1. What is size of D1? Integer, integer, double pointer, and these are the doubles. Let's say doubles are four bytes and pointers are four bytes. Everybody is four bytes, okay? Pointers and the integers and doubles are four bytes. Somebody's talking, oh, okay. So however it is, just tell me what you are saying, okay? Is somebody saying online? Is somebody saying something? Oh, Jam, your voice is breaking. My voice is breaking? Yes. Sorry for that, but... Is it, is it, is it fine now? Should I turn off my camera? How about now? Is this good? Is it still breaking? It's better now. It is better. So we'll do it now, like that way. Okay, so uh, what, again, it says my network quality is bad, but I don't know. So what is the, what is the size of operator? What does the size of reporter, uh, operator return for this one? Size of D1. 4 bytes, 4 bytes, and 4 bytes, 12 bytes here, and then I have 40 bytes there, right? So 12 plus 40, 52, does it return 52? Does it return something else? It will return 12. It will return 12, because this is my object D1, okay? And inside my object there happened to be a there happened to be a, a pointer it points to some location the compiler is not smart enough to follow this pointer and remember oh yeah i remember this was a dynamic located and it belongs to this no compiler is not that smart okay because that pointer could be a meaningless pointer it should be a it would be a dangling pointer right so there is no there is no way for the compiler to make that kind of a judgment the compiler will say that okay your size is 12, okay? 4 bytes, 4 bytes, and 4 bytes. That's, that's what it knows. But as a user, as a designer of this uh, simple class, I know that this is a, there is a meaningful pointer there. If I follow that, there will be an array of size 10. Why is it 10? Because I know the capacity is 10, okay? This is all my interpretation. This is all my interpretation. So, let's try to do this. Let's say I did not write the copy constructor. Okay, so I am going to make a new array, pf array d, d2, d1. So d2 is going to be a copy of d1. I did not write the copy constructor. What would be my new copy constructor? It will a new object. It will be an object like this. So this is d1. And D2 will be somewhere in my memory again. D2. Everything will be copied. Okay, one by one. So I copied this zero. It is used. Nice. For my capacity, it is 10. It is nice. For A, I will copy the exact thing and it will point to this location again. So that will be the picture. So, did you like this picture? No, you don't. The answer is the answer is no, right? Yeah, this this one is pointing to the same location. Yeah, and you might say, what is wrong with it? Right? The wrong with the, 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 the what is wrong is this. When I say D one ten gets the value of seven point two, okay, it will change the 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 tenth well maybe I shouldn't say ten. Okay, uh, two. Okay. Okay, it will, it will, it will, it will change the the second element inside this array to 7.2, and it will change it for both of these two objects. Okay, assignment doesn't mean copying doesn't mean they're sharing the same location, as the name implies. It should be a copy of it. Okay, so in this case, it looks like default behavior of the copy constructor doesn't work. 
right? It doesn't work the way I want. It causes this kind of a nasty problem. The, the worst thing is this, worst thing is this. Mm -hmm. If object D1 dies, okay, if object D1 dies, mm -hmm. this will go, this will go, and this will go. My destructor will deallocate this position, and if D2 continues living, D2 will point to a location that doesn't belong to me anymore. So it's going to be a dangling reference, and it will cause a segmentation fault later. Okay? So that will be a bad thing. So you should know definitely how this copy constructor works. Okay? And from time to time, you will say that, okay, I need to write a copy constructor for this kind of a class. And the same thing with the assignment operator. This is a bad thing. When you say D2 gets the value of D1, okay? Or maybe I should, I should do it this way, okay? Uh, PF array D, let's say D3, and D3 gets the value of D1. Again, D3 will be here, and it will be 0, 10, another pointer pointing to that one. This is the behavior of the default assignment operator. Behavior of the default assignment operator. So it looks like if there is a pointer involved, then we need to careful. We need to be very careful about this. Um, uh, this this assignment operator and the assignment operator and the uh, copy constructor. Okay, assignment operator and the copy uh, constructor. Good. Okay, so that's why I need to write my own copy constructor, my own assignment operator, so that this doesn't happen. Every time I make a new copy, new assignment, I need to reallocate, I need to allocate some space for this array, okay? Every time I make a copy constructor, I need to allocate space for this array. That's what we are going to do right now with this code, okay? So copy construct, it says that, it say that I am going to take, I am going to take, by the way, I, I was getting, I was getting a compiler error, right? Let me get that compiler error again. Yeah, didn't like this one, right? Didn't like this one, it say that this is a private because of this test, yeah? So if what happens if I do this? What happens if I do, if I do this? Okay. And again, do that. Am I going to get the same error? What happens if I compile this? What, what did I do? I change. This parameter from PFRAD to PFRAD, PFRAD uh, reference. If I compile this, what's going to happen? Copy. It will copy. Okay, no problems. Why? I am not. I am not making any. Uh, I am not making any uh, call by value operations here, right? This is call by reference. There is no copies are made, okay? There is no copies ma made. So if there is no copies made, then copy constructor will not be called. If it is not called, then I should be fine. I can I can keep this copy constructor as a private function member. Okay, this only happens. This only happens. Okay, this uh, this error happens if I am making a call by value. Okay, so remember this copy constructor is called in three places. Okay, whenever you do this explicitly, copy constructor, whenever you return an object from a function, or whenever you do this call by value thing. Okay, good. So I prevented that one. So let's go back and again, let's look at the code, copy constructor code, 
I just want to say that, okay, see, this is very careful. Copy constructor takes a takes a constant TFNAD reference. This is very important. If I do this, this is a very interesting and serious error, actually. If I try to write a copy constructor like this, a copy constructor that takes a PFNAD object as a non-reference object, okay? This, this will cause a very serious problem. Can you see what it is? Yeah, exactly, but say it louder. Nobody, can you, did you hear him? What did he say? Uh, it requires copying. So you heard him, okay, you, <laughs> okay. The copying constructor itself. Say it louder, I am not re making a repeat, just say it louder so that everybody can copy hear. The constructor itself will require a copying operation. It's exactly, if I do this, whenever I make a, when I make a call to copy constructor, copy constructor needs a copy of this object and it will call the copy constructor again, okay? And the copy constructor is this one, this one will call the copy constructor again, so it's going to be kind of an infinite recursion, right? So this will continue, this will continue until uh, my stack is filled up, and that will be a bad thing because my program will crash. But it is better than making a logical error, you will try to figure out what's going on, that kind of stuff. So it's just a, single character here, it, it, can, it can mess up everything. Well, sometimes people say that, okay, why did they have to make this language so complicated? I mean, just a single character and lots of hidden rules and etc. Java doesn't have these kind of details, okay? You don't have to remember this kind of stuff. Now I am going to tell you a number of rules saying that, okay, these are two very important functions, assignment operator and uh, copy constructor. And you should definitely know when to overload them and when to define them, okay? So if, if it is needed, definitely you, you have to do it. Otherwise, remember, okay, if you are the, if you are the program developer, okay, you, do, you write this nice PFNAD class and you send it to your customer and it works everything fine with you because you, you never tried it with the objects that are passed by value, okay? And your customer happens to use call by value of your object, and your 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 class will will explode in the at the hands of your customer because they are trying to call by value, and you never tested call by value or the assignment operator, etc. So your class will be a buggy class, but you don't realize it because you never tested it with the call by value operation. Okay, so it's your responsibility. This is your class. You don't say that. I never thought that you would call my object, you would use my object with, with call by value function calls, but it, it is customer choice, right? You can, I mean, we have been using the STL vectors, right? We use the STL vectors as a call by value object or a call by reference object. And it should, it should, it should work fine for, 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 for all the cases. And the same, is, same thing is valid for our classes too. So your classes should be ready, should be usable anyway our customer wants and that includes the call by uh, value uh, uh, operations that includes the any kind of assignment operation okay so let's look at this again i take a constant okay pfra okay another question if i do this what happens what it still compiles it compiles, of course. The other one compiles too. I mean, so what happens if I say that my copy constructor will take any object as long as they are non-const, I guess. So this will do what? Okay, let's compile this one. Let's compile this one. Where is this one? Okay. Since I changed lots of stuff, I don't I don't remember what I did. So what does it say? Definition. That not okay because I did not. Yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't fit m with my original. Okay. Let, first of all, let me take this from here. Let me make it public again.
Okay, it was here, right? So num const. So I should compile. Let me see. Compile. It compiled fine. So what, what, what's the problem now then, right? It compiled fine. Ah, maybe I should do this. PFAD and PFAD. How about now? Would it compile? Yeah, it compiled. So, why did I need a constant there? We don't. We don't modify it. So we you don't know what? Ourselves. We well, no. Well, in, in in this case, also you are giving me the my favorite answer to me, but in this case, my favorite answer doesn't work. I mean, he says that constant for ourselves. It is for development. It restricts ourselves. But in this case, no. It is more than that. Okay, it is more than that. Let's say. I have a const PFRAD object, right? And I like to send this const PFRAD to this test PFRAD, and test PFRAD expects a const PFRAD and makes a const here, okay? So you see the problem when I try to compile this, it will say that, <laughs> oh, look at this one. I don't know why, what is it? All it is saying is that I don't know how to make a copy of a const PFRAD. Okay? Because my copy constructor works on only non const objects. It doesn't know how to make a const PFRAD. So the problem is here, okay? There is no way I can compile such a function. And it is okay if this one is like a non const call by value. It is, it is okay, I can compile this. But this one I can't. That's why this one has to be a const. Okay, it's not going to modify that thing, and um, it will work for with 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 all types of PFAD stuff. So make this const. So it's going to be always a const and a reference should be there. Okay. Good. So uh, what does this do? It says that, OK, I have other object. I get the other object. I will copy the other object's capacity to my capacity. I will copy the other object's number used to my use. This is this, OK, this line is exactly the same as what the default copy constructor would do. OK, this is the exact behavior of the default copy constructor, yeah. For my data member A, I need to be careful. For A, I need a new array now, okay? So I get a new array, double capacity, okay? Same capacity as the, before, uh, the other object, okay, this one. Well, I, I, people are not using this. This is other is much better, okay? I have myself and the other object, okay? These are all other. Uh, so, um, A gets this new double capacity, and then I keep copying the other objects A values to my A values, one by one. So, this assignment is a double assignment, right? I am copying it one by one. Or if you like to be more efficient, maybe you could have used memcopy, because it's a double array and double array. But my, my, this is more explicit than this is this is nicer. Why? Well, I keep changing topic from from. The, but this is a nice question actually. Was this compile? I am going to give you something. That is my yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Was this compile? Remember, test PFRAD expects a expects a PFRAD. Okay, does this compile? Why should I compile? Why should it compile? But when I try to compile it, it compiles. Yeah, there was a constructor line twelve. 
conversion constructors, right? Conversion constructors works like a, I can convert an integer to a PFRAD. That's very interesting, right? So, yeah. yeah no, 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 it's my turn. I'm asking the question. Don't ask the question. Yet. I am going to ask that question myself. Okay. So, is this something likable? No. That's very confusing. Why? I mean, nobody expected that this would compile, and nobody's. Uh, you, you, why you don't know why I'm asking this question? But compiles, this shouldn't happen, right? I mean, as a side effect, I never wanted this. I mean, that kind of a thing was okay with the minor class because when I say one, one is kind of a one dollar, right? So it was meaningful there. But one is not a array, right? But since I have this one, that that's not that's, that that doesn't look good. So what would I do to prevent this kind of an error? Yeah, you put explicit here, right? So it is always good idea to put explicit at the beginning of single parameter constructors because they may act like conversion constructors. Okay. Okay, good. Again, another issue with the C, C, C++. These kind of things are not that popular with other, uh, for example, Java or Python, okay? In Python, you just write, copy, paste stuff, and modify it, and run it, and you don't understand what's going on. And, and honestly, some people say that, I mean, that's not a very good way of programming, but it is getting more and more popular. That doesn't mean that, well, it's a bad language, yeah, I know, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn it, we shouldn't use it. That only means that we should use it with these kind of things in mind, okay? I mean, even with Python, even if you have the, if you, you don't have these kind of details to pay attention to, these kind of things are valid. And if it, the, the fact that you are ignoring them doesn't mean that those problems are still there somewhere, but we are not addressing them. Python is not that kind of a word, but C and C plus R. Okay, if you get your training, if you get your programming skills build up using in this kind of an environment, C, C++ environment. I mean, th there is no programming language that you can get, you, you don't get used to. You will learn everything, you will understand everything, you will know their shortcomings, you will know their advantages, and etc. So it's a good idea to start from C and C++, or better yet, it is, it's, a, it's, it's very good to start from the assembly itself, actually, because everything is converted to the assembly, right? So in this department, we don't start from the assembly exactly. Well, in 101, we show you a little bit assembly, but not that much. Uh, so it is your responsibility to learn uh, some assembly language in a very detailed way uh, uh, in your appropriate classes. So let's go back to again. OK, let me make this not compile. OK, no, I don't know anything to make this work. Okay, good. It compiled. It, it did not compile. So let's go back to copy constructor again. I think this is the fourth or fifth time I am coming to the same function. So uh, I get a new array and copy them one by one. That's what I do again. Good. So let's draw the, let's draw the memory picture after this okay this is what uh, our default copy constructor uh, picture and this will be our new picture again maybe i should not yeah copy this okay so d1 will be like that I don't need this d3 anymore okay d1 is pointing here when I when I make this d2 PFRA D, D2, D1. So remember our first line, capacity is copied the capacity, used is copied the uh, used. 
and then D2 made a new new array of size 10 okay I have 10 elements in it and then D2 will point to this array and then one by one this one will be copied to this position this one will be copied to this position and etc so this is our new picture much better okay so whenever I modify the elements of D1 D2 will not get affected okay good so how about this one instead of can I do this Can I do this? What does the index operator do? Index operator with the other object. It just here is the index operator. Okay. It just returns the element number index at at that uh, the, the, the the index number the element of A of the other object as a double reference, non count double reference. Of course, yeah. Well I can I can do that. Well, no, well, actually, it doesn't, yeah. If I didn't have that, yeah, this will not compile because I did not provide the, okay, let's see the other message. Get rid of this one. Compile. Yeah, what, what is the problem? It says... Where is it? Oh, this is not a this is not a compiler, this is a linker error. Did you get the error? It's a linker error. Problem comes from here. Problem comes from here. This index operator has to return a const double reference because this is a const other right but the index operator that I have defined okay is using this one and I did not implement this one remember I added this it was like that originally I added it later so this will not compile now let me compile this okay so this will not compile. It says that this one doesn't return a uh, this one returns a a non const reference but your object is a const so how do I fix this of course I would fix this by making by making this one public again and go to the index operator unfortunately copy paste the whole thing and make this constant constant okay it returns a constant and this one is a constant right? now compile it okay it compiled and linked <laughs> remember there was a linker before okay I, I made it a I made the later I changed I made the uh, compiler error and after that I fixed all of them okay so let's go to the copy constructor again okay this one works how about this one Does this work? Would it compile? Would it link? Would it run? Okay, let me give you the answer to the first one. Yeah, this would compile. 
and this would link would it run no problems because what I am doing is I'm just calling the operator index on my current on my current object and this this works on it and I am I'm just sending this I as a parameter to index operator of course, but should I do this? No, because this is just making an unnecessary call the index operator two times. So uh, I think the better, 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 better line would be okay. A I gets other I. Okay, so this one will compile, and we can. I hopefully it will yeah it compiles and it will run. Oh, okay, I'm way out of my time. I, I think I will stop here. Tomorrow morning I will, I will do. So before coming tomorrow morning, compile this program, run many times, do these kind of experiments like I did. Would it work? Does it make any sense? Is this the same thing, etc.? Look at the implementation of the other stuff and try to make this class uh, as dynamic as the vector class, right? Because this one has a capacity. After I reach the capacity, it doesn't grow, okay? So make it grow after the capacity. Okay, tomorrow I will try to do the same thing myself. Okay, see you tomorrow morning.